Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Tom from Best Practice Network. I'm in the marketing team, and I've helped uh, pull this webinar together. Uh, this webinar is about the National Professional Qualification for Leading Teaching, the MPQLT. Uh, and we've got a lovely panel today who are going to talk all about that. Laura Saunders is our lead tutor um, for all of the specialist programs, including MPQLT. Uh, she's going to give a 20, 25 minute presentation uh, with contributions from Cheryl Abbas, who has very kindly joined us from uh, Chilton Teaching School Hub. Uh, over Luton Way, uh, and she's got lots of experience facilitating um, and MPQ participant experience. Um, so yeah, so really val valuable feedback there. And Jamie Ganley, our head of sales, he's going to be talking all about the application process, uh, the availability of funding, uh, and there's lots available for all state-funded schools um, and a few other things. So without further ado, I'm going to mute myself, hand over to you, Laura. And um, and yeah, oh, just a quick one, sorry, before I do that. So we've got two boxes, we've got the chat box and the Q&A box. Uh, if you think of any questions as we go on, just put them in the Q&A box. Uh, Jamie will be monitoring those and then Laura will get back to them uh, at the end of the presentation and we'll have a, have a good look at those. And just as a quick test, could, you, could everybody type where they're from in the chat box, not the Q&A box, just so we know we're working. Just the name of the nearest town or city. Uh, all right, brilliant. So we've got Bleak, Basingstoke, Birmingham, uh, Luton, one for you, Cheryl, uh, Rossendale, Basingstoke, uh, Southampton, London. All right, brilliant. So, so yeah, we're best practice. We're, we're based in Bristol, but we are very much a national company um, or a national training organization. And we're going to run these groups all over England uh, starting in September. And, and yeah, OK, no more further ado, I promise. Over to you, Laura. Thank you, Tom. Thanks so much. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's great to see you from all over the country. Uh, we're all really excited to be working with you um, and, to, and to give you that info and insight into the MPQ LT with Best Practice Network. So just very, very briefly, some insights into where it's come from and what it is, how it's positioned. Um, we're now one whole year into these new, the new iteration of these MPQs, which are essentially part of a golden thread of progressive professional development for teachers and leaders, as you can see on the slide. There are a growing number of MPQs. Um, six of the programmes are shown here, uh, replacing the four previous uh, MPQs in the previous iteration, which you might have heard of. Um, in developing the, the width, really, the breadth of the pathway, the old MPQ ML for middle leadership has been replaced by the MPQ LT, which you're here to learn about tonight, the MPQ LTD, which is leading teacher development, and the MPQ LBC, leading behaviour and culture. Um, and that's in order to provide more choice, more opportunity, and a sense of direction for school leaders such as yourselves um, to become better leaders within those specialist areas. Um, just very briefly, a little bit of context about them. They are all, uh, all the specialist programmes are 12 months long. The leadership ones are 18 months. Um, and that after that 12 months, you uh, take um, a, a summative assessment task. Really importantly, there is no project. Um, it's um, uh, assessed purely on the summative assessment task at the end. And the formative assessment tasks throughout um, help you towards that. Um, a really key difference is that there are no longer any leadership behaviours in the DfE frameworks, um, but uh, we at this practice are really, really keen on continuing to embed really key leadership behaviours and skills throughout. So they're embedded into our programmes, which we feel are really complementary to the DfE's statements. Um, there's a much greater emphasis on practice based activity in this new iteration. We think that is fantastic. And we've geared our programme towards that. Um, it's very much about participant context through practice activities and in school performance coaching sessions. Equally, there's a great deal of domain and school specific evidence, um, as opposed to the previous generic um, evidence base from previous iterations. OK, so in terms of assessment, very, very briefly, there is no longer a school improvement project as there were in the old uh, MPQ iterations. It's now a really streamlined assessment. 
it's about the application of learning in practice. Um, and the final assessment follows the 12 month programme of engagement, as I mentioned briefly earlier, um, through an unseen case study scenario where participants are asked to write a response um, in under, and around 1500 words. And those are that that is written and submitted within an eight day window at the end of the taught program. Um, really importantly, in order to be entered for that summative assessment task at the end, all participants need to meet at least 90% engagement um, across the programme elements leading up to that over the 12 months. So we know that the frameworks are designed for really different interests or experience. Um, however, since best practices programmes have been written to be highly inclusive and really sort of suit diverse experiences. I'm going to take you briefly through two participant case studies of um, participants on the uh, MPQ for leading teaching. So very, very quickly, this is Shazia. Shazia works as a secondary school teacher at a really small rural girls school in the Midlands. It's quite niche. And she's been teaching for two years um, after a previous career in the financial sector. She currently hasn't got any leadership responsibility, but she really does want to promote as a leader within the next few years. And she's really unsure at this point of which direction she might take. Um, but she's aware that her general understanding and knowledge of teaching and leadership are a real focus for her at the moment, um, following her induction into teaching a couple of years ago. So from there then, she feels that she'll have more of an idea about what she wants to lead in school and is currently deciding between um, a route through leading teaching and learning uh, and the possibility of um, possibly undertaking the NPQ LTD after she's completed this LT. Um, she knows the LT programme has a content area around professional development too, so it gave her to compare and, and to weigh up and to link effective PD to the leadership of teaching. In comparison, this is Yusuf. Yusuf's also on the LT. Um, he teaches in a large inner city London school, which has had a really mixed history of success in terms of teaching and learning. And after about five years at the school, his head teacher really recognised his passion for super high quality, consistent teaching and learning as well as his ability to really kind of galvanise others and um, in, in leading improvement. So his head teacher recommended he find a leadership programme and the LT was perfect for the direction he and his school needed to take. Um, he's currently the maths lead and he's hoping to continue to promote through the ranks at his school initially into a phase lead and then into the wider trust by heading up leading, uh, leading teaching and learning. So we've also got participants from earlier settings, HE settings, alternative settings, FE settings, independent schools, international schools, the list goes on. And my point really here is that the participant body engaged in the MPQL team is diverse and um, they're all at really different points in their teaching and leading careers, all at different, completely different school or setting contexts. And the programmes that we offer are written to enable all participants, no matter what setting, to thrive, um, whether you're already in a leadership post or you're aspiring to be one. That's really important to know. So if your passion or your role is for developing pedagogical or subject or curriculum approaches within your team, your phase, your school or your trust, the NPQ LT is likely to be for you. Equally, um, if you want to be responsible for leading teaching in a subject, a year group, a team, a phase um, or a group, it's uh, likely again to be the MPQ for you. So very briefly, the MPQ LT is based on content areas like all the other MPQs um, and they hold a series of learn that and learn how to statements. You'll see those crop up when you're on programme. Um, the content areas have been designed by the DfE and they appear in the DfE's MPQ frameworks. Tom, if it's possible, would you mind adding a link to the chat box to the MPQ LT framework, please? Thank you. Just put him on the spot there. Absolutely. Um, one second. One second. Thank you, Tom. Um, so this slide you can see now shows you the content areas from across all um, three of the specialist programmes, um, how they compare to the leadership programmes. 
Now, we have structured all of our programmes to cover all of their content areas, which is a DfE requirement. Um, and this is the way we've done it on the slide. So as you can see um, from the blue uh, circle, uh, the LT programme covers a great deal of breadth um, to respond to the wide range of experiences and responsibilities that participants engaging in it have. So it covers a great deal of content areas. What's really important to know is that underpinning all of these content areas is a hugely strong and robust, clear evidence base and resource list. Um, and we've linked these to really specific school practice that are going to be presented throughout your programme to really exemplify what the content areas look like in practice, uh, bring them alive uh, in the given context, and then to really challenge each of you through various different kinds of activities to apply them with relevance to you and your schools. Um, just importantly to note, at every point, participants carry with them a leadership development record, the LDR, and that tracks the progress and ensures relevance for you all the way through as, as individuals on the programme. So this group of content areas has guided the way the programmes um, have all been structured and designed. Um, and all of best practices specialist MPQ programmes follow these learning stages. The um, development stage occurs three times. So following your induction stage, which speaks for itself, um, you will have face-to-face -face events, online course study and practice activities, formative assessment tasks, and in-school coaching um, three times, uh, cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, before you enter the summative assessment stage um, after the taught programme. Um, also on this slide, it demonstrates the number of hours approximately for all of those specialist programmes, including the MPQLT, and, and how long you'll be expected to be um, working towards that. Just very briefly, Best Practice is a very large professional development provider delivering MPQs and a whole host of other wonderful professional development, and it's been happening since around 2012. So when choosing an MPQ provider, especially like ours, it's really important to consider the values and the approaches through which we operate. The whole team at Best Practice work really, really hard um, to ensure that we are constantly inspiring learning, working together, striving for excellence, and importantly to us, acting with integrity. So we're all here to get the best leaders for all of our children, no matter where they are in the world um, or the country today. Um, and the MPQ work uh, supports your professional learning through the programme, and more importantly, ensuring that you're even better leaders at the end of the programme than you were at the beginning. Um, so we're really proud to be here with you all this evening um, and to share these sort of insights about the MPQLT. And so now what I'd like to do is invite my colleague, Cheryl Abbas, Lead of Early Careers at Chilton Teaching School Hub, one of Best Practice's wonderful partners. Um, and Cheryl, uh, welcome. Uh, as well as being a partner with Best Practice, I know you've also completed one of the other specialist MPQs as well. Um, so you come at this from a partner and a participant perspective. Can I ask you really briefly, please, to just a give a little bit of context about Chilton and the MPQs, uh, the place that the MPQs play in Chilton, and also your top highlights of the MPQLT from your hub's perspective, please. Yes, definitely. So Chilton Teaching School Hub is two hub allocations across Britain. We service kind of four kind of county areas. We currently look after around 650 schools. So um, at the moment we have around a thousand participants on MPQs. And for us, it has just been absolutely incredible to see how how many schools want to get involved with the development of staff. I mean, the bonuses go for miles. It's about retention of staff. It's about the impact on children. You know, we're beginning to see those staff that have just finished that first round. They're talking in different language. You're using the learn that and the learn how to, which with my ECF hat on makes me sing because it's the same language and schools are using that through the breadth and we're hearing them using that in their training language. I think the new, the new specialisms are calling out for what people needed. They wanted something very specific. And having facilitated the LT, I have watched staff really think about how they can develop the team, how they can develop that across a phase and a subject area. And one thing I think is really key is everyone kind of thinks to themselves, but I'm secondary or I'm primary or I'm EYFS. It doesn't matter on this course. There are so many case studies that are linked to different areas. And when you're having those conversations with your colleagues, the conversations can be taken across the breadth, but there are specific case studies that work with their own areas. 
And as a participant myself, I really looked at this and thought, oh, where am I going to find the time? And you see those hours that Laura talked about, but it's not quite as scary as it looks. A lot of that is time for you to kind of log onto Canvas. And, you know, I've done it sitting on a train, reading my bits of case studies and going through readings um, and going through that work. So I think that from both leading this, from recruiting for this and from being on the course, there's some real positives for what we see in the classroom. Then our students are um, seeing the kind of benefits from this, but also our phases are, are improving, our curriculum leads and the development as we go forward. Thank you so much, Cheryl. There's so much there from all your different perspectives. And it's great to hear the impacts that's already starting to have. I was really interested to hear about the language, um, and the behaviours of the people who've been who've been participating and, and what impact that's having for the students, which is, let's face it, what we're here for. So brilliant. Thank you. Um, I also like your kind of multitasking of doing it on the train. Marvellous. Um, <laughs> so could I ask you then just to give us a couple of examples of the the roles and the pathways um, that some of your participants on the MPQ LT have uh, are on uh, whilst they've been doing their um, program please. Yeah definitely so I could think of a couple of colleagues to use as key examples and um, we've got some colleagues that are from a relatively new school so a school that's only been open a couple of years now and for members of, this, of the school this was a really good opportunity for them to understand the leadership behaviours as they begin to implement them so these are people that are starting from the beginning in these roles that they're coming into a new school they're having to build from scratch and what this allowed them to do was I think I mentioned to Laura before you all came on time it gave them time to sit and think it gave them time to really think about what it was right what was right for their school but also within their individual teams in that area but the guidance to look at it so it's been really positive for those colleagues that are new to role and that are looking at building it those that are aspiring, I think this is a really brilliant course for if you're thinking about that's the area I might like to go into. And one of Laura's case studies earlier, you know, was that someone was thinking about this might be where they want to go. This will give you that real open eye view. It's not just about how it would look in your school, but how it looks for other schools. You'll get to see case studies of staff that have done these types of roles and how it's developed. And the same with staff. I mean, lots of people kind of think, oh, what kind of people are on this course? We've had people up in senior leadership teams come onto these courses who just want to refine their knowledge and they might have changed their roles within SLT or they might have just been doing it for such a long time. They want to come back and refine it and work with colleagues. And the, one of the big things is it's not just about your learning. You learn so much from your colleagues across different settings. And like I said, whether that's, um, you know, big schools, rural schools, EYFS up to secondary that that ability to have those conversations so I don't think that there's necessarily a type of person the course fits it, it's open to everybody as long as that's your train of thought that kind of your phase lead subject leading so we've had a variety of people which has just been wonderful brilliant thank you I was to back that up actually I was talking to a group of participants today and they were talking about the value of the knowledge they've been gaining on the program but also the value of the perspectives of the other people they've been engaging with just as huge for them as the knowledge um so that's that's brilliant to hear and like you say we have participants from all sorts of different roles and backgrounds we've got a number of um very senior leaders who've taken part in the MPQLT to really bottom out and understand the most recent and up-to-date research on leading teaching and learning and how they can then share that in school and then get other colleagues onto the LT program. Equally, we've got teachers who've been in teaching two years and going, yeah, I'm, a, I'm open to this. I want to see what, what I can do with leading teaching. So like you say, massive breath. So thank you. That's brilliant. OK, so you've given us a little bit about this already, Cheryl, but perhaps there's a little bit more. What have you, what have been the most sort of impactful pieces of learning so far for any of your participants on the MPQ LT? Oh, I think particularly with education moving forward, this evidence base is huge for all of us. And one thing that if we're really honest, teachers don't have is time. And one thing that's been brilliant about the MPQ and the format of it is everything you need to read is at your fingertips I laugh about doing it on the train but it really is that easy that you know you can log in on your phone or on your computer and all the evidence is there for people and lots of the conversations we've had with participants and for myself on the courses has been that you know generally you only make time to read the piece of evidence that somebody's appointed you to that you get to read one a week but actually you've got this kind of structure of evidence and then you're discussing that in person so it's it kind of takes that individual learning to another level when you've got those other people so I think for personal impact it it gives you the time and the allowance to focus on the things you want to 
but it's also very focused in that you're reading the right things and not just reading what somebody's tweeted about as being the new hip bit of evidence that you need to read in school and let's change everything. This has been really carefully thought out. And even just down to little things, like if you only need to read part of that piece of information, it's clearly linked as to where you go. You're not searching and Googling for lots of information. So the kind of the structure for me and that that refinement of which pieces of evidence are relevant to what I need has been and what those individuals have needed has been really important. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm really hearing a lot from what you've said, actually, about the importance of the application of any of that reading or online learning. And what we've what we've been really, really keen to do with the programme is provide the evidence base and provide that research, the rich, recent, up to date research that we know is rigorous um, and supported by the DfE and moving that very quickly into so what? So what are you going to do with that in the classroom, in your school? How are you going to apply that? Um, and one of the ways that we've um, wanted to do that is to create a series of um, video case studies that you'll have seen and all of your um, LT participants have seen, where it's about participant, uh, it's about leaders in the field and how they are le leading various different aspects of um, teaching. And like you said earlier, they're relevant to all the different phases, all the different possible contexts schools and settings um, and then they really encourage you through practice um, activities to start applying them you do formative assessment tasks to test how it's working in school really go for it in school to see what's working well and what else you can be doing and I, I'm just it's really great to talk to you and hear about the impact that that's having on the participants in, in Chilton so thank you I've just got one last question Cheryl before we go to um people's questions in the Q&A box. Have there been any commonly arising questions from your MPQ LT participants? Oh, interesting. I think before people start the programmes, the question has been, is it going to be onerous? Have I got time for this? My favourite question from head teachers, how do I get everyone to do a whole school project when I've got 10 people on this? I think you've already nailed that one in saying that there isn't those areas. I think a lot of participants have questioned that, well, what do I do with this at the end? And in the first session, the main question is, well, what am I gonna do with this when I finish? And by the second and third session, that question's gone because they're telling us the answers. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna try this with my class and I've seen this and this is working. And it's almost as if you are self-guiding yourself through it. So your facilitators will be giving you key questions and lots of key information, but they're not telling you how to change this. What they're doing is allowing you the autonomy and the freedom to think about the relevance to you and your setting. And where Laura was talking about those case studies and those videos, one thing that's been extraordinary for a lot of people on the course is we don't have time very often to go and talk to our colleagues down the corridor, let alone our colleagues later, you know, out in the next town or across the country. And during this, in the course of those three days, we're going to watch several different case studies you know, I remember watching one on my course and when I was doing mine, and it was a course someone I knew, I didn't know they'd done a case study, and I certainly didn't know that about their school, and I've known that person for a very long time. But I got to learn about similar types of schools in other areas, what it's like in a city, and it was almost as if somebody had given me that kind of free pass to take a week out and visit loads of different schools, but I got to do it in a really quick succession. So I think that's been kind of a really great thing for people. So I think the main question was, what do I do with it? But by the end, they found their own route and the way the qualification works is everybody's end point will be slightly different, but it will be the right end point for them. That's so helpful, Cheryl. Thank you. There's there's a couple of things in there, isn't there? The first thing that I heard was, isn't it interesting that the first question is, is this going to be onerous? Is it going to take a lot of time? How are we going to free people up to do this? And actually what they're finding as they're going through, they're managing their own time. Um, as they pick it up and as they begin to own their learning throughout the programme. And then linked to that is this bit about self-management and autonomy. And for me, it just it, it makes me so happy because what I'm hearing is that those participants are learning those leadership behaviours and skills really early on and then putting them into practice for the programme, let alone beyond and in school. Um, so the students must be seeing these amazing leaders in school. So thank you so much, Cheryl. I, I really appreciate that. Tom, Jamie, are there any questions coming through um, that you'd like to put for Cheryl? Just for Laura, do you want to go on to the next slide? Something that's next steps, and then we'll come to questions. Sure. 
So, um, as I'm sure most of you are probably aware, um, the, the DfE have currently got a scholarship scheme in place. Um, if you work in a state school or an academy, um, that covers the cost of any of the uh, MPQ costs, which is great. Um, that's in place um, over 2023, um, but we don't uh, have a guarantee at the moment of how long that's going to be in place for. Um, but at the moment, you get it fully funded as if you work in a state school or an academy. Um, if you work in an independent school or an international school, if there's any international participants um, on, on this call, um, there's a fee you can pay to still be able to access the programme, um, which we can discuss in a different way. Um, but if you wish to move forward, uh, the best way uh, to start an application is to go onto our website, so onto bestpracticenet.co.uk um, or outstandingleaders.org. Uh, and there you can view all of the programs in greater detail, um, download the framework which Tom has put into the chat, and then start an application form um, straight on there. Um, also, at the same time, I'd recommend for you to have a chat with your CPD lead or your head teacher um, or your line manager, possibly, um, about, you know, you wanted to undertake this program and the reasons for that. Um, because as part of the process, we'll ask you to uh, they'll, we'll ask them um, to gain gain their approval and their support for you to, to do the program. Um, but if you have any questions at all, uh, we've got three ways you can contact us, um, either by email, uh, by phone call, or by live chat on our website. And one of our team will be able to uh, to help you and answer your queries, um, hopefully straight away. Um, the deadline is the 16th of December, so that's about three weeks away. Um, which I think is quite scary with Christmas around the corner. Um, but uh, as I said, between now and then, we're on hand uh, to support you and to do anything that you might need. And I think on that, we'll go to any questions. If anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat or in the Q&A and we can go through them. There's a great question just popped up uh, from Kerry. Uh, how does the face-to-face -face element work? Great question, um, Kerry. Will there be meetings locally? I'm in London, or might there be travelling involved? Um, we work on geographical groupings, Kerry, um, so that no one is having to travel really far. Um, if for any reason anybody was in an area that there wasn't um, a geographically appropriate face-to-face -face event, we would offer at the sort of last resort a virtual version. Um, but yeah, it will always be local to you. You'll always be able to find a hub near you. Um, and we do all the hard work for you in, find, in sorting out the geography too. I hope that answers it, Kerry. Does anybody want to add anything else to that one around face-to-faces? I might <laughs> say, um, just quickly, uh, so MPQLT is, is one of our uh, most popular MPQs, and we've, we've got hundreds of groups around England, so you will be pretty close, unless you're on the absolute uh, fringes of the Isles of Scilly, uh, you should be pretty close to a group, and, and you can use the contact details there to sort of confirm where your nearest one might be. Thanks. This is just from a hub point of view as well, when we are looking at grouping with Beacon, it's always worth... Um, if you live far away from your school, letting the hub team or the BPN team know, because it may be that they'll place you based on your school um, address, because we won't know where you live. So if you work in London but live in Hertfordshire, it's worth having that conversation either with BPN or your local hub. So just so that we can place you appropriately without creating more kind of journey time for you. That's really helpful, Cheryl. Thank you. Especially around cities like London and Manchester, we want to make sure that you haven't got to sit in loads of traffic um, as well. Thank you. OK, Lydia has asked, great question, if the deadline is the 16th of December, what is the date the MPQ LT actually begins? It's February. I couldn't tell you the exact date, but it's February. Um, so it gives us enough time to, to sort of process all those applications and let you know whether you've been successful and get you get you going, Lydia. So I hope that helps. Anybody want to add anything to that? Okay. Okay. Um, so somebody has asked, if I would like to do it with a specific hub, would I be able to make that choice? I think so. Jamie? Yes. Uh, so as part of the application process, um, it will ask you about your, the it's called the engagement route. And in there, you'll be able to recommend uh, which partner you've been or which hub you've been uh, referred by. And then we'll be able to link it all in that way. So you attach to them uh, automatically. So look out for that on your application form. Thanks, Jamie. Tom, did you want to add to that?
You're on mute. Tom. I've just noticed I'm on mute. Uh, no, that's a pretty good, a very good answer from Jamie. Sorry. Um, yeah, the application form. Yeah, there's there's a box. Uh, select your partner, uh, and it's as easy as that, really. Thank you. That's grand. Okay, Victoria. Great question. If you are planning on being off for a couple of months during the course, but are planning on returning to school, are you still able to complete the course? Um, without knowing the ins and outs, Victoria, it's hard to answer specifically, but broadly, yes, if you have access to your in-school performance coach, who is somebody that would be nominated from within school and that you can still have those ongoing conversations um, and that you have support for while you're off. Um, but that also you have the opportunity to um, undertake the practice activities and the formative assessment tasks, which often need you to have some sort of contact with school but each um circumstance is different so we can talk to you about that um offline if that's helpful but yeah we've made it flexible so that things like that can happen tom did you want to add something i did yeah uh, so we get lots of things like that we get people who, who change school people whose cir circumstances change um we've got a really supportive team um so over communicate with us tell us in as much time as possible um what you think is going to change if you think uh, your studies will be affected and uh, we can almost always find a solution um yeah. yeah contact details on the screen now thanks tom and like tom said you know we are really supportive loads of different circumstances crop up we're humans life happens lots of things happen so we're we're here to support you with whatever that is Okay, somebody has asked, does this course offer training to build up skills ready to be a year leader or phase leader? Fantastic question. Right, Tom, do you want to start? Got in there quickly. No, sorry, this is, this is all yours. <laughs> Fine, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, it does, broadly speaking. Um, there are, it, it's all about improving your leadership and developing your leadership of teaching and learning within school and perfect roles that follow that are year leaders, phase leaders, subject leaders, department leaders, um, lots of different um, effectively middle to senior leadership types of roles. Um, so yeah, it does uh, it, it in broad answer to your question. Cheryl, did you want to add something there? Yeah, I was just going to say, is thinking about there'll be lots of different people on that course so not only will it be building up your skills you'll be able to learn from other people that have perhaps been in those roles there'll be other people like you that are gaining that kind of momentum and something that I think that I should have mentioned when I was talking earlier and I haven't so I'm going to throw it in there now you mm -hmm. have your in-school coach but you also have an external online coach that's based in the BPN team and they are an absolute wonder so that is somebody that you know doesn't you don't work with you don't see every day that you can ask all these questions to so that inevitable silly question they are the best person to ask so when you are new to those roles or trying to you know you're aspiring to those roles you have not only do you have a facilitator running those sessions you have that in-school coach with you but you have that external support mentor as well to ask all those questions to so you this wealth of knowledge becomes at your fingertips as soon as you walk onto the program thank you cheryl and just really importantly to say about that uh, best practice leadership mentor they are your main point of contact um, for the program and then your in-school performance coach who's a person nominated within school is your main point of contact for um, all of your application of your learning within school. Uh, Kerry you've asked another great question sorry if this has already been answered I don't think it has but could you give an example of a formative assessment task please okay um, we provide waggles what a good one looks like um, online when you start the program Formative assessment tasks are quite detailed, so it's hard to summarise them here, but essentially they're setting you up for checking in with your learning at the end of every cycle to see how you can apply it, what you've learnt, and how your language and your um, leadership is developing and changing over time. Um, and they are modelled on the summative assessment task, the SAT case study um, at the end so that you are getting lots and lots of preparation towards that end point as well so I hope Kerry that that answers it enough at this stage Sharon is there anything you want to add from a participant perspective yeah I think one thing that was really supportive as a participant where when you do those formative assessment tasks there are actually nine to pick from 
So you don't just have you don't just get told what you're going to be working from. There are nine different questions of which you're only doing short couple of hundred word responses to. And you select the three that are relevant to your journey. And that's quite interesting from a participant point of view and a facilitator when I was working with people is that people could then really hone down what was relevant to their development but also the school development and often people were assigning what was the best fit rather than it just being a generic exam question that you have to respond to like everybody else so that ability to kind of really kind of refine it to your own journey was brilliant brilliant thank you Cheryl um Rafina question about will this support um development I think to become an assistant head is what you're um referring to and that you're currently a middle leader yes it will it's absolutely the right trajectory um, or one of the right trajectories for participants on the LT programme. Um, Jamie, do you want to take the question about the accreditation? Yes, and I suppose just to add to that previous question as well, um, I think if you're unsure between this programme or the MPQSL, so the senior leader one, which is the step up, um, drop us, uh, get in contact with us by email or by, um, by, by calling us, and we can have a look at your experiences and kind of point out which you know, just guarantee which one is correct for you and what stage you are in your career towards that assistant head role. In terms of uh, Sultana, your question, in terms of, is it an accredited course? Uh, yes, it's accredited by the Department for Education. Uh, so we're one of the lead providers of the MPQ programme, uh, which is a DfE course. So in a nutshell, yes, it is. That's great. Thank you, Jamie. Um, and somebody has asked, is there a breakdown of what the course will involve across the whole year, which is a really, really great question for you to be able to decide whether it's for you. If you go onto our website, you find the programme specifications. There are graphics in there that show you headlines, titles of the types of um, uh, content areas that you'll be looking at. And they're the ones that I referenced earlier around implementation, subject and curriculum, how pupils learn, classroom practice, adaptive teaching, all sorts of different um, content areas. And those are all mapped across the year through the elements that I mentioned earlier um, in terms of in-school performance, coaching, face-to-face -face events, online learning, and, and those other blended elements. OK, Melissa has asked, what are your top tips in terms of completing the application? Melissa, I think that might be the best question ever. <laughs> right. Fire away, Jamie. Yes. Um, get in early, I would suggest. Um, but also it probably take you about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Um, so undertake it when you've got a chance, you know, away, you know, so you can do it preferably in one sitting is, you know, generally best. Um, but you can do it over a period of time um, if you want. But do it when you've got a bit of headspace. You know, you haven't got 20 things you're juggling um, and spend a bit of time thinking about the answers and why you're looking to undertake the programme. Um, and that will no doubt help you when you first start and carry out your induction. Can I add to that a little bit as well? Yes, do please, Cheryl. Talk, reach out to other people that have done these courses as well because I think the biggest bit of advice any of us that have completed them would give you about the application is just do it get the application done get it in and then you don't have to you know people worry about you know is, is it the right thing for me apply you'll see from the questions your ability to answer some of the questions that are in there they're only looking at guiding you and where you're working so my best bit of advice is log in fill it out and jump on the course because you won't regret it once you get onto it Fantastic. Thank you, Cheryl. There is just one final question from an international participant. I know we're covering international participants in different webinars, but yes, there is um, absolutely a possibility of having a remote face to face component instead. Thank you so much, everyone. Tom, over to you. Oh, brilliant. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, really, really good presentation. Uh, in the marketing team, we, we try and portray these courses through brochures and things, but I think hearing from the people who've created and who deliver and who've completed the courses is just so much more beneficial. Um, to everyone who's attended, we will be sharing uh, a recording of this event, plus the slides, which Laura pulled together for us. Um, we'll be sharing those in the next few days. So check your inboxes for those. In the meantime, yep, thank you so much for attending. Any more questions, uh, the number and, number and the email address is on screen. Um, a special thanks to Cheryl. Who, uh, who very kindly joined joined us from uh, from Chilton today. Thank uh, you. Thank you all. Amazing stuff. Thank you.